What's going on, YouTube? So, this is like, this is like the third time I've tried to do this video. For some reason, I just can't get it right. And this time, I'm just going to do it. And good, bad, whatever I think about it, I'm just going to post it. I think I just keep redoing it because I don't want to post it. Anyway, um, if you've read the title of the video, um, I like those videos. You gotta watch like 20 minutes of it to figure out what the fuck. So I'll give you the short, sweet, simple version, so you can get out of here if you want to. Uh, but uh, we've pretty much lost everything, and we are starting from the start line again. I feel I've been like super down for the last month, and this is like the first time I've could even. Just not getting to a point where I would even want to do this video, I guess. Anyway, yeah, it's all gone. As you can see, we're not in the beast. We are back company driving. So that's the short, sweet, simple version. Now, for the extended version. <laughs> uh, like I said, I wasn't going to do this. I was just going to say, fuck it, you know. I'm going to get on YouTube no more anyway. And then I was, like, I was on there and I was like, man, I got... 3,000 subscribers and it's like so at one point or another there's 3,000 people that have you know subscribed to your channel to you know I felt like I kind of a thank you for subscribing and all that good jazz appreciate all y'all but I felt like you know I owed it to the people who had some sort of a interest in what was going on in my life like it's important uh, to do this video and let you guys know what was going on, where I'm at, and what happened. And so that's why I'm doing this. And I mean, we just couldn't uh, survive the downturn of 2019. So uh, three years and three months as an owner operator, uh, and uh, a few bad financial business decisions on my part. Uh, and uh, just some really crappy luck and some health some health issues on my side of the family whatever there's a million reasons but uh, started back what September October of 2016 and just before New Year's or actually just before Christmas I decided I was going to shut it down. So that's what we did. We returned the truck. We worked with the bank. We returned the truck, both trucks, the Peterbilt and the new Ram. Oh, such a nice truck. It was harder to return the big truck, though, than the pickup. The pickup was like, you know, whatever, a couple months I can go out and get me a new pickup or car or whatever. But it was so hard to get into that, into that Pete that uh, that really sucked to return that was hard i shed a tear too but we did that and uh then we officially ceased operations and closed it down uh really just became official about a couple days ago uh, and we're back company driving went to work for a company out of colorado about an hour and a half away from my house uh, and so far, I'm, I'm liking it. The, we go out east and we come back. So every trip, I do all my resets at home, and uh, which is nice because I don't like doing resets or waiting for loads and all this BS out on the road. I feel like I'm out on the road. I want to make money. So it's it's kind of nice. It's been good so far, and we're making good money. You know, Uncle Sam is getting his cut now. So, but we're still taking home. A nice chunk of change at the end of the week and got all the bennies to go with it so that's nice and uh i still got the black freight liner the mistress uh she's at home sitting beside the house uh, which i you know i had the option i was like you know get rid of the get rid of the pete and then go back to that and stay an owner operator and there's just so much other shit that went into it you know and 
that market's just so crappy. And I was, you know, with this election year, I don't see it getting much better. You know, and I wasn't in one of those sweet niche markets, you know. And it's easy to say, well, you can make it on a dollar a mile. You working for the company making 60 cents a mile. You should be able to be an owner op for a dollar, right? It's another 40 cents a mile. Yeah, nah. I mean, 2017, 2018. Um, well, of course, 2017, I was moving for, you know, crazy money, three, four dollars a mile. That was oil field stuff, high, high pay, low miles, tough roads, tough work. To being at Landstar in 2018 uh, with both trucks uh, at 250 plus a mile, my cut, you know. After, you know, that was my 65% to, you know, just after the first year, I shouldn't, that was one of my regrets is I shouldn't have left Landstar because, you know, the discounts that you got on fuel and tires and maintenance and all that good stuff. And, you know, they, you can set apart an escrow and all that. That's just really helps, especially in a down market, like what we have, what we had in 2019 and what's going on in 2020. So I wish I would have stayed there. That was a bad business decision going back into the oil field, especially seeing where the market was. But, you know, they told me, yeah, 10,000 a week, come on. Hook you to this, you know, three axle 250 barrel tank and we got all the work you can handle. And never even got close. And that's just, uh, if you've worked in the oil field, you know how that is. One month they have it, next month they don't. Or, you know, it could be a date, case by case basis. This well's supposed to come on next week. It's going to produce all these barrels. They turn, you know, they, they start flowing back and all of a sudden hole falls in or production is not as high as they thought. And now instead of 20 trucks a day, they only need 10 trucks a day. You know, well, those 10 trucks are, especially if you're the new kid on the block, you're not going to get those loads. So that was a bad business. Just should not have done that. Wish I didn't do that. Um, but we did it. And I think that was probably just one of many that led to the culmination of everything. We just couldn't afford to operate, you know, a dollar, dollar 30 to a dollar 50 a mile at 80 to 90% of the load. At one point I was moving for dollar 36 about as low as I got dollar 36 a mile and I'm burning two thousand dollars a week in fuel you know doing 35 almost four thousand miles a week running running my ass off for dollar 36 you know and you're gonna do the math and you're gonna say oh it's five six thousand dollars man you're crazy even with two thousand in fuel but If you've never done been an owner operator, then you're not really going to get it. And if you do it the right way, um, which I was doing 16 and 18, or I'm sorry, when I started in 16, 17 and 18, you know, after you buy the fuel, after you take out escrow, and after you pay your truck payment and your truck insurance, and excuse me, guys, sorry, and uh, whatever deductions you know what i'm saying on the truck side of it then so you got to stop and then and then take your personal payroll out and now you own a business and you know you've got to match part of the taxes plus take your tax money out you know and if you're not doing it yourself then you're paying a payroll service to do it and keep track of all that and file with the state and the feds every quarter and paying your quarterly taxes you know and then if you're you know, providing insurance for yourself. We all know how expensive that is. And then if you're setting up, you know, you need a retirement, you know, unless you just plan on working until you're 100. Um, all that has to come out of that chunk of change. All that's got to come out of that, you know, 5,000 gross. By the end of the week, there's nothing left or not much. You know, you blow a tire, you catch a nail, you blow a hose whatever your truck has to go into the shop and uh yeah it just doesn't work so i had created this hole 
and part of it's you know well it's all my fault uh but yeah it was just this massive hole and basically you know talking with my dad and stuff and sitting down and really looking at the numbers and looking at the p and l's and you know being in the friggin red all the time and just looking at the expenditures that were going out it was like you know i'd have to move out of my house and basically move into the truck get rid of the get rid of the dodge and really cut back on a lot of stuff which I had already cut back. I'd already changed myself to a 1099. I had dropped my my insurance, you know. And of course, as soon as I did that, I wound up in the hospital a few times. And you know, those, uh, you know, one emergency room visit, fourteen thousand dollars, which is bullshit. But it is what it is. Um, we were just in this hole, and really, the only way to get out of it would be just to sacrifice everything and live in the truck nomad style. And at at 30 years old, I don't want to do that, you know. And I don't think you should have to do that to be an owner operator. Um, a lot of guys are going to disagree with that and say, "Oh, that's just the owner operator lifestyle." Well, it's bullshit. You know, we're not in a massive recession. There's no reason to be moving for, you know, almost a, well, what a third less, you know. Say you're moving for three bucks a mile, and you're now you're, you're with your own authority, and now you're moving for two bucks a mile. You know, over a hundred thousand miles a year. You know, roughly what you're going to do. You just lost a hundred grand. This ain't the Great Depression. Um, and for me, it was too big of a pill to, to swallow, and I could stay solvent. So that's where we're at. I'm not going to keep going down that road, you know, because then I got to get into a bunch of other stuff. That, but that's the semi 12 minute sweet version of it it sucks am i gonna go back out as an owner hell yeah i'm gonna go back out as an owner operator i knew that as soon as i got in this company truck and got back out on the road which don't get me wrong i like this company and there's no way i'm moving until after the election's over and kind of see where things are going to go next year a i need this year to just recoup because I feel like I've been in a boxing match and I just got my ass kicked. And I'm just getting over the fucking pitiful depression mode here. Uh, and I got some some personal stuff I got to take care of. Uh, I got to get healthy. Healthier. Which I haven't had an attack in a, a while, which is nice, but, you know. I need to go to the doctor, the dentist, and all that shit, you know, and get my freaking personal finances ironed out, get back level, get back to living off, you know, a recent, or not a recent, a uh, a realistic means of income, you know. Back in the day, it was like, oh, I made a thousand bucks a week, and you're like, got money. I was taking home, you know, the weeks I would take home and net $2,000, it was like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? You know, and that's and that's my fault. At 27, you come in, and all of a sudden, you go from making a thousand bucks to making these, you know, five thousand or four or five, six thousand dollars. I think the best I best week I ever have is like seventy two hundred dollars. And uh, at 27 years old, you know, I'm not a business major. I was a mechanic and then a truck driver. I graduated high school. And uh, I thought I was doing it right and thought I was doing everything. And, you know, I should have put in, put in back a lot more money for the downturn. Um, and I just was like, you know, I'll just follow the money. And I got to a point where I wasn't learning to live off of what I had, but just, you know, I need more. I'll work more. I'll make more and to cover my expenses. And I just kept adding to the expenses. Um, a lot of people are going to watch this and say, you fucked up when you bought that truck. If you told me the day I bought that truck that I was going to go out of business and lose everything, I still bought that truck. That was the funnest two years, almost two years uh, ever. That was so much fun. Just from the fact that, you know, being able to put down a big enough chunk of change to buy it, calling it mine, and, and just 
had so much fun in that truck. So much power. Running out west, you know, with the hammer down. Um, yeah, I just had a lot of fun. And uh, I think I'll get back there. I know I'll get back there. Um, but like I said, I think this year, unless something drastically changes, which has been known to happen in my life, um, we're going to stay here, do the company thing, and uh, get our shit straight, and then we're going to get back out there, and hopefully the market will be better. And when I get on somewhere, um, I really research it more than just a couple of phone calls and some Google searching, but some face-to-face -face talking to other drivers and shit and just really figuring out where I want to put my truck uh, when I when I do go to do that so that I stay there. Because moving, moving a truck is so much harder than just moving yourself. It's easy to go to work for another company and tell them the an old lady that, you know, oh, we're just not going to get a check for a couple of weeks, but we'll be all right. We don't have that much going out from moving a truck and paying all that stuff, you know, tires and maintenance and getting tags, $3,000 a year for tags. You know, that's crazy. Um, you still have to pay all that when you're moving a truck on top of the fact that you're still going to have to wait to get paid and all that good jazz. Alrighty guys, I'm done chewing your ear off. Uh, I think I'll still do some YouTube videos. Obviously when I got something to say, or something comes up, maybe I see something cool or, you know, I definitely got plans to work on the mistress. Man, they're like heartburn or whatever. I should not have ate those street tacos. They're fucking me up. But, uh, you know, we'll be we'll be back on here, and uh, I'll again I appreciate all you guys for watching and following me. You know, I feel bad if I let some of y'all down, whatever. You know, piss people off. I don't know how that would happen. It's not your guys' life, but hopefully you'll stick with me, and uh, you know, we'll I'll get through this. We'll move on to some good content. I will one day have me the truck of my dreams. I have no doubt. So keep the rubber on the road, guys. Stay safe. Have fun out there. Watch out for these crazies. Uh, try to make some money. And we will catch you all on the next vid. Thanks for watching.